Hello and welcome to The Last Andy, a board game podcast coming to you from a f- trio of freeing countries across Europe. I'm joined here today by Alessio. Hello. And Alexis. Uh, from Belgium, bonjour. And I am your host of the day, Audrey. Today we're going to be talking about game collections, uh, a game called Service Compris, or Family Business, depending on which language uh, you get it, and Hit Pedal to the Middle. But first of all, though, it's time for the last Andy catch-up. Uh, what have you been doing lately, Alessio? Oh, a couple of things, actually. I, I have been playing Marvel Snap, and I went to Diamond level, so it's, it's, not like, it's not like a lot of news, but it's news because I never went uh, so, so far with uh, Lander. So as an amateur, I'm pretty satisfied with my results. I'm, uh, since uh, there are two weeks uh, still in the, in the Lander for this month, I'll try to get to Vibranium, but I don't think I'll get better than that. Anyway, I have to say I love Lockjaw as a card. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, and this is one of the two things I've been doing. The other thing is actually related... Oh, okay. Uh, the other other thing is actually that I'm playing a lot of Eon Trespass Odyssey. And uh, I, I don't know if it's fair because we, we absolutely talk about this uh, uh, as soon as all of us are fairly deep in the game. But uh, I'm enjoying it. So since the pledge manager is still open, uh, it's a good game to take into account. <laughs> uh, that said, uh, the actual other thing I've been doing was trying to te- to get my hands over it, pedal to the metal. There's a fun story about this because uh, it looks like that uh, the entire Europe is filled with French copies of it. I I didn't. Uh, uh, this is a game that debuted in Essen, and uh, since then I was searching for a copy. It went sold out in Essen, so the friend I sent to collect a copy for me uh, didn't manage to get an English copy. After that, I got offered a copy that I uh, understood later it was in French, so no deal. After that, I got a copy from Lotana in Belgium, uh, which was uh, again in French, uh, but they w- they were very helpful. So they, they helped and uh, took back the French copy, sent it back again in French, <laughs> and after oh, wow. that, and after that, I managed finally to get uh, a copy of it in English from them. They they did everything free of charge, so. Uh, I don't know. I understand that this is not uh, a medium for advertising, and we are not paid to do that. But I have to say a shout out for the for them because they were very nice and kind, and they helped me through all this ordeal. So uh, that's it. It was a fun uh, uh, around Christmas time story, and uh, there is a lot to say about the language edition of it. But we will talk about this later. So Don't spoil! Is... <laughs> yeah, exactly, no spoiler. <laughs> so, uh, what have you been about? Uh, uh, well, let's see. Audrey? Yes, it's me! Ah! Yeah! <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, I have been uh, doing board game stuff lately because uh, for Christmas my husband got us a few games, including a mini rug, which uh, Fen already talked about in a previous episode. Uh, also got one of the Tiny Epic games, uh, which is uh, Tiny Epic Pirates, so I will uh, see. Uh, to talk about it uh, in a few in a bit of time, uh, we also got um, let me remember things uh, precognition, uh, a game which I we haven't had time to look into it uh, yet, uh, which it looks based on a kind of card throwing and giving them to the other players uh, with different modes, card versus uh, etc. So the the presence of these different modes uh, pleases my heart, let's say. <laughs> so I really want to see uh, how it ends up uh, being. And yeah, just like you, uh, quite a 
severe amount of Aeon Trespass Odyssey uh, with my husband. Um, we managed to handle the English language fine enough. I think that compared to other games I played, the English is less hard to translate live in French, I would say. Um, so it works fine for us. Yay. And 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 um yeah i showed a spirit island to another friend um i'm i do my best to convert uh, everyone i can to the goodness of uh, spirit island and i can't wait for us to talk about it oh yeah i can't wait um, yes that's all for me what about you alexis uh, on my end, things have been going uh, fairly well as we, we got ready for the holidays and stuff. Uh, I, I'm getting my sister uh, the, the third game of uh, Micro Macro, which I'm very eager to try and maybe talk a little bit about to the podcast. The blue one, right? Uh, uh, isn't it red one? I'm not red, then sure green, then blue? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's it's going to be very interesting to play. I quite like the the first game, and uh, the, this this one looks to just to be more of micro macro. So um, I'll be uh, I'll be sharing my opinions on it uh, at some point in the future. I've also been playing a bunch of uh, one deck dungeon recently. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, always enjoyable as a as a quick game to uh, to pick up uh, for a while. Yeah. And uh, and <laughs> I bought a copy of uh, of Parks, but I didn't uh, notice that uh, it was a German copy. <laughs> uh, but thankfully, I have a lot of German friends that I uh, I'm going to meet at some point. So I, I decided to keep it as a side and uh, play the the good host when they invite me to to their place, so that I can <laughs> just uh, offer the uh, the Parks in German for them and as a nice attention rather than. Just me having an extra copy around. Yeah, as someone in my family says, there is never, there never are problems. There always are solutions. Exactly. This is this this is a great philosophy to have, I think. Uh, other than that, not too many games that I've been playing recently. Uh, I'm a bit jealous of everybody playing uh, ATO. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes, uh, no? I'm very good to to try it on my own. Um, Oh, well, and also uh, started uh, a couple of uh, games of uh, Seventh Continent recently. Um, been in the, the mood to, to play some of it, uh, mainly because uh, I'm very eager to try the new game that's, uh, I think that's uh, going to release in the summer of 2023. Uh, I want to say it's either second or third quarter of 2023 i'm very excited I for it i didn't follow it beyond the campaign but i think that's still severe uh delays right yeah 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 it was supposed to be released in uh, april of this year but they delayed it by uh, a year because of um uh, shipping crisis yeah i think shipping crisis uh, uh, and they also wanted to put more effort onto the the translations and the, the text and stuff i think okay um Here i'm not I'm too, bo too bothered but I'm excited for it. Here yeah. I'm coming to terms with the fact that it might be smart to sell my uh, Seventh Continent. It, it hasn't been on the table for two years. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And uh, I think that Seventh Citadel is going to be, you know, everything that is nice about it and way more so. Yeah, um, but I would not get uh, Citadel instead. It's uh, more like uh, mm, ATO yeah. uh, and hopefully San Kokushin, but that's going to be later. Um, Midara um, are keeping us busy enough. <laughs> yeah, uh, about Seven Citadel, I think they are actually late with the design because they they made uh, uh, the last update was the story mode uh, being kind of finished for the first chapters, but uh, they were late with a lot of the designs. They they admitted the uh, they admitted that. Basically, it took way more than they expected. It's okay if it takes time to design. Uh, at least people is inf are informed, so uh, yeah. they're just waiting for I, it. Yeah. I don't see a problem. Uh, it's good that you you mentioned that you have way too many games that occupy kind of the same place on your table, uh, like ATO, Midra, and stuff, because that's actually the topic that I'm going to talk about today. Yeah! The perfect <laughs> game collection! Exactly. Um, 
So that's actually a topic that uh, came up onto um, Board Game Geek. There will be a link in the episode's notes. Yep. Uh, the to to end the year. Uh, oops, I did not know that its name, which is a problem. I think Alex uh, Alejandro something. Um, <laughs> give me one second. Uh, oops, I'll cut. That. This will be the, the edited, and no one will see anything. Oh, here. Uh, yes, I will do. I will do my best for this. <laughs> um, Eric Anderson Sundon, uh, who I think is, yeah, he's uh, one of the members of the BGG team, uh, wrote a nice little article called The Perfect Game Collection to Cover All Occasion, which um, basically covers, uh, exposes a table that contains the best, ga the best BGG game for uh, a given time frame and player count. And I gotta say, it's very, it's a very handy little guide to fill out your collection. Uh, I have a fair few games, but I found myself with just the wrong amount of friends uh, at home or the wrong amount of time in front of me, uh, looking at my go game collection and realizing that either I didn't have anything good to offer that could fit our group, or I had five different options and uh, a lot of them just didn't end up uh, seeing the table often. So uh, if you want to, to go look at the table, um, if you need the game that la that lasts for between uh, 60 and 90 minutes, for example, and can accommodate three players, then the list is going to recommend uh, Wingspan or Viticulture or Everdale. Uh, but if you have four friends and uh, between 120 minutes and 180, uh, the game recommends uh, Gaia Project or Nemesis, Agricola, uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, I'd recommend people to have a, a look at it because it's a nice way to look at your collection and to try to figure out what next game you're going to buy to try to fill out those those time slots that you you might not think about too much when you you want to buy a game uh, that made me rethink about my own library because i have a tendency to go with uh, games that i'm interested in or with a system that i that i like which is always nice but without really thinking if they fit uh, the same space as other game because uh, the most most of the games that I have are either solo games or uh, four player games that last a fair amount of time, which is good, but they then sort of fill the same time slot. And some of them I play less because there's just a uh, better option for the same uh, span of time. Uh, for example, I have um, Dungeon Degenerate, Too Many Bones, Kingdom Death, and Tainted Grail that all occupy kind of the same-ish slots. And when it's time to see the table, what's more often going to see the, t the, the table is going to be either Kingdom, Kingdom Death or Tainted Grail if I have four friends that want to play a, like a longer, more involved uh, board game. Meaning that uh, too many bones that I like, but not as much as the other games, uh, will just never see the table. And it kind of sits on the, on the side. And if it was just slightly shorter or slightly longer, maybe it would see the table more often because there would be more of a need for it. Um, I just find that's a, that's a nice little thing to, to look into when I want to widen my library much uh, so that multiple games don't cannibalize the same span of time. Uh, is that something that you've encountered too, uh, the two of you? Um, I wouldn't really say this way. Uh, I would more say that um, it would be sometimes space issues because I just don't want to pile games and pile games and buy storage. Uh, <coughs> and that, that's what basically made me thought about selling um, Seventh Continent, which I will probably do, I don't know, in spring or whatever. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is breaking. I had a cold last week. <laughs> that's all right. Um, so yeah, it's more that yeah, even though I have a big apartment, I don't have unlimited storage and I don't want to buy shelves and shelves and shelves just to store no games. So if at some point I'm like, yeah, I think uh, there, we, there is, let's say, a hole in competitive light games, that would be something I would be looking into. I see. What about you, Alessio? Well, I actually uh, like... Um... My case is a bit uh, weird because I actually got enamored with uh, with mechanics, and when I see a mechanic which piques my interest, I 
actually have a big difficulty in not getting the game just to uh-huh. have a look and see how it works so but, but doesn't that lend to to those games never seeing the table because they are yeah like, there's multiple of them that, yeah that's not exactly that they not not don't never see the table they actually see the table it's just that i get bored easily because uh, uh, a lot of games have one very good thing and not a lot of else. Yeah. So uh, what we actually do here in the standy is uh, uh, throwing games to the wall and see what sticks. Because actually the one game I bring uh, from time to time is the one game which convinced me more than have a couple of plays or, or so. And yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, and that, that's the way I have my collection, which is more a bloated mass of stuff. Which uh, actually uh, I, I call uh, regularly or every every Christmas I make a donation to local uh, gaming associations and stuff. Uh, that's a that's a good way to uh, spruce up your collection. Yeah, the, the I I always uh, give stuff. Uh, th- that's kind of a problem because uh, wh- when I go making a donation, I usually uh, give away the games I, I I know they won't stick. So uh, I basically gi- I'm giving away games that suck <laughs> either way or another oh. so, so yeah exactly so since i, I am ashamed of this i all oh, i always uh, add something uh, of the good games for for, for instance the this year uh, i gave away i fi- i finally managed to get to give away a copy of uh, of like the social game, the only one oh, yeah. I gave in, B- in my BGG collection, but I also gave away uh, uh, the. I also managed to give away two copies or two versions of Sherlock Holmes uh, uh, Consulting Detective. I actually liked the Times case and the Jack the Ripper cases. So that's it. Basically, that's my story. A sad story indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I'm more likely to give away unlock uh, boxes to my sister after I've played it. Yeah, yeah but that makes sense because you yeah. kind of just want to play unlock for once, right? It's a very special case. Yeah, yeah. I, I also give away to my brother all the exit games I play and unlock. I, I actually only played the lock epic adventure, so it was a good one anyway. Yeah. Personally, I've tried to look into my library and uh, figure out a way that I could pull a few games that uh, would fit multiple different slots uh, to try to make a lightweight pack of games that I could bring uh, with my family for Christmas, for example. <laughs> uh, so personally, I picked uh, Wavelength that, uh, for games that are under 30 minutes of play, uh, Dice Forge for up to an hour, and Dungeon Dare for up to two hours. With that, I could go see uh, my parents, my cousins, and just like have, have three games that are very lightweight to to carry around, but fit for like different occasions uh, very easily. Um, and I I can bring that uh, bring that always with me to to see some people. Uh, is there like a pack of games that you you have at home that you could uh, use to fulfill those uh, multiple slots like this, for example? Actually, I have stuff from this actual list. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Meaning, uh, you have a lot of them, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for... I mean, Wingspan is always a good one. Too. Yeah, everyone has Wingspan actually. Uh, no. no, not everyone has <laughs> Wingspan. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, for the one player, for for instance, I, I am looking the the various lists. Uh, uh, first, I am outraged that there's no copy roster in the one thirty minutes. But anyway. Uh, the first one I have from the list is... Oh, no, that, that's Coffee Roster is sixth. Actually, I have Coffee the, Roster and Maki. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, games on that list. I would not recommend uh, going through all of the games. I think there'll Absol- be like Absol- about 500 of them. Absolutely not. But uh, if I have to think now, uh, I'm not thinking for the number of players, but actually the players uh-huh. uh, w- with whom I play. For instance, yeah. uh, uh, this Christmas as a party game... There's Wavelength and there's Soundbox. Uh, they are, these are the two party games I will bring. Or there's yeah. uh, It Pedal to the Metal, which will absolutely replace Flamme Rouge, but we will talk about this. <laughs> yeah. w- Wavelength is a perfect game to bring to my family for uh, as a party game. It's always a good, uh, a good laugh. Um, what about you, Audrey? 
Uh, it's 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 very simple. I bring like I bring the same kind of games uh, which my mm. family, which are what I would call the pick and play games, uh, Azul, Chakra, uh, things like that. Because yeah, yep. a Calico. Yeah, or Calico because my parents Calico they, they don't uh, like like chaining two or three games with different mm. types of rules and things. They prefer to know one game and always play the same game and know that the rules are like this and always play it. So that suits them better and um whenever we are on holidays uh, at their place we if we visit our uh, let's say old friends from there uh, we generally don't take the time to play a game so we are not taking games and furthermore when we go there we also have a cat uh, in the car so we have <laughs> a cat the litter box uh, the luggage the Christmas a present, etc., etc. So space is very limited. Yeah, uh, that's a good uh, that's a good shout out, uh, I guess. So I, I would invite our listener to try to have a look at their their collection and try to figure out um, maybe a, have a look at that list too and try to figure out like what game what uh, categories their game fits and if there's maybe something that's missing for the collection that could be a, a good addition to it. Uh, and that concludes my topic for today. Yeah. So uh, after this fun during the holidays and collections, we are going to have another throwback to the gargantuous holiday meals this time. Uh, many of us probably had not that long ago, and it's time for Service Compris. So Service Compris is a very simple uh, game. That's the French version. The English version is called Family Business and the thematic is completely different, but that w will probably make uh, it easier for our dear listeners to find uh, the game uh, on their own uh, language and uh, suppliers. So, but I'm going to talk about the French version Service Compris because there are a few twists there that I think make the game a bit more fun and in one of the cases bring full interest on that. So in both games there is some danger um, coming for the peoples of the forest in French or for gangs in English. <laughs> you see the, the, the topic is completely different. You either have people of the forest or gangs. Uh, the family <laughs> business version it shows a gang war which ends up in mob fires while the French version shows the people in the forest being eaten by a giant. So which is in, unfortunate. Which is exactly unfortunate. But you see, you are the lead of one of these people and you are maneuvering to make the other players, uh, people get eaten by the giants or <laughs> being killed by the mob uh, thing. Yo. So each player has some cards in their hand. Every player gets cards from a common uh, pile and these let you put someone from another person uh, on the table and not in front of the player anymore and or do actions like say no I'm not putting my character in the table you have counters like this or you can get one of your character back from the table of maybe five minutes from the street in English um, so you're going to use these cards to basically give uh, the other players uh, characters away from being killed at some point <laughs> but in both versions, they still end up being killed. And you will have counters to save your characters. Okay, l let's get back to the to the people in the forest thing. They <laughs> are being... No, no, they are being eaten by giants. You are yes. giving other people to be eaten instead of your people? Yes. As, oh. soon as, you, <laughs> a, as soon as there are six people on the giant's table... <laughs> in, in, in French, it's called the gulton, which is basically the feast. <laughs> the feast starts, and every turn, so at the beginning of each player's turn, the giant will eat the closest person on the table. So you turn the card down, and that uh, character has been eaten. And then the next one, and the next one, etc., until the table is empty, or until a player plays a card that says, the feast stop, the feast <laughs> stops now. And you can also have a, a third type of card. So we said the, there are the let's say, um, supply cards, where you supply the feast. And then there are the counter cards. And the last uh, type is the save cards. You can move around um, 
people on the table, you can get back your own people from the table, you can stop the feast, etc, etc. So you will have to play these uh, cards uh, smartly so that you don't uh, get eaten. You have uh, a king and I think it's eight people and once your king or queen gets eaten, you're dead. Uh, your people doesn't exist anymore. Everyone got eaten by the giants. <laughs> it's... It's so weird because the other version of the game it uses a uh, mafia as a. <laughs> I was looking at those cards and said, "What the giants? What is she talking about?" Yeah. Yes, <laughs> exa right. exa exactly. It's very, it's very different. Um, but I mean, well, I, I can see the mechanic being similar anyway. You are just yeah. uh, putting other people to be killed, and uh, the, the, the yeah. yes, yeah, exactly. The closest one that, that seems to be to be really fun. Yes, but there is a twist which I think is only in the French version, Service Compris, which is why I decided to talk about this one, and mm. also because that's the one I played. Um, yes. So there are, I think, six um, populations in the forest. You have like mushroom witches, you have like pumpkin heads, you have orcs, uh, goblins, etc. And the names of all these characters are puns. Even the giant. The giant is called Oscar Amel. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a very French way of uh, doing the, a game like this. Yeah, that, that's a French twist. And every time you take a new character, you're like, oh, that, the, that witch is called Sabine Oculaire. Um, <laughs> Binocular, that, that one is uh, translatable. I, not everything can be translated because, for instance, the orc, which is called RVTT, which basically means trial bike, uh, you can't translate that one. Um, but everyone, every single character has names and they are thematic. Like uh, all the uh, pumpkin heads, they all, they all have vegetable names. All the witches have names that are linked to science. Uh, all the orcs have names that are linked to speed, transportation, um, craft. Uh, etc. And you sometimes spend more time looking at your people and saying, yeah, look at how this one is called. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm going to put your character on the table. Take this card and put your character on the table. Um, you, you switch the, the tone, I think, uh, of how you're talking uh, with your uh, opponents uh, very fast. And I, f I personally think it's super funny. Uh, it's a game I played first when I was, I think, something like 11 or 12 years old in summer camp, and uh, it never gets old. Um, I managed to have my mother-in-law play it, and she loved it, despite not really understanding the game. Uh, and so every uh, yes and no, because every time we visit, she wants to play, and she still doesn't understand half the things. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we have to re-explain the rules every time, of course, because we were smart enough to gift the game to her. And yeah, I have I have to say that I appreciate the fact that the game never gets old because that's as old as me. It's forty years old. This game. <laughs> the the French version had a second edition with a box uh, with a newer design. It's a bit less compact, but. Um... None of the drawings, etc., changed uh, compared to another game I played at exactly the same time, which is Elixir. Okay. Uh, which is a game where you get ingredients and cast spells, spells can being silly or being very powerful. Um, and this one had additions with changes of graphics, uh, but Service Compris remained really uh, keep, kept exactly the same design. It's just the box that was slightly uh, recut. But uh, the same illustration placed, while well, slightly off, since the box doesn't have <laughs> the same size, but uh, everything else is the same. You know, about card games, one thing that has to be said is that they actually are always pretty cool. Uh, this kind of game, if you think about it, it's 40 years old, it's a, it's a long time ago. Th there were games like Careers, the game of life, uh, there were games like this around uh, in 82, I think. Uh, well, actually, these games are for, from the 50s, but uh, uh, in the 82, we played games like those. And uh, here it comes a game which is actually pretty modern. Every, 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 everybody plays cards, and 
the cards closer to the giant get eliminated. That's actually pretty modern. And Unless you play yeah. the card that says the feast starts yeah. and the caramel eats people two by two! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Yeah, and cards get gets move around, and uh, there is stuff like that. This is kind of modern gameplay. I I can see why it doesn't get old. It's actually something that I can see myself playing with family, and should be pretty fun and lighthearted. So yes, cool. <laughs> and I think as well for kids. Um, not too young, but that are starting to be a bit more serious about games. It's also a very good one to teach you about alliances, about piling on a player or not piling uh, against uh, another player and things like that. I think it's very good to learn some basics of uh, alliance and collaboration. Uh, and backstabbing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and backstabbing strategy. Yes, exactly. Um, because there aren't too many things to do. All the cards have their effect written on it. So you don't have to spend too much time worrying about the rules, but more worrying about yeah who to backstab, who to pile on <laughs> against, uh, etc. Who and when to backstab. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And how. And how. And how. That, that, that's important because you can say, oh, actually, I'm going to take your character and put it the closest on the giant because I can. Or just say, oh, I'm. this character gets eaten now. Oh, sweetie, you didn't do anything wrong. It was cool to backstab it. It just was the not the right time. <laughs> yeah, and, and then there is always the player that said, no, but this character has a cool name. I want to keep it for last before my king or queen. Yeah. That's, okay. That, that's okay, like, that's fair. Yeah, that, that's like people uh, playing Jaipur who always uh, obstinately take leather. Yeah. Okay, this is cool. Yeah. So after walking the fine line between having the others eaten and not being eaten yourself, it's time to walk the fine line between speed and overheat with Alessio and heat pedal to the medal. Wow, I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that transition. <laughs> <laughs> okay, heat pedal to the medal. Uh, this is a game uh, that debuted in Essen this year, so it's pretty recent. Uh, you know that Ca that, that it comes from the duo Granerud Pedersen. Uh, they are the people behind Flamme Rouge. Actually, we talked about it. And uh, it's a racing game uh, about race cars in the 60s, which is a beautiful time to be racing. Uh, they were basically heavy, heavy metal rockets propelled by explosion at impossible speed without anything to keep people safe. So it was beautiful to watch races back then, or at least I am told, because I am not that old. So, uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but does that give me confidence? Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a game, aside from the theme, which is stellar, and we said that, this is a very beautiful game about racing. Uh, now, uh, since this game is pretty easy, I just want to say that... You get end of cards, the cards are your speed, basically. You can play cards for uh, speed 0 to 4, and uh, uh, you have a car with gears, like in Formula D. When you take a turn, you start with the first gear, and then you can decide to, move, to shift your gear one level up or one level down from your position, or uh, to position if you take one hit, but we will talk about it later, because basically... Uh, the gear you are in is the number of speed card you can play. So uh, the higher the gear, the faster you can go. Uh, this is a racing game, so the first one uh, uh, crossing the finish line wins uh, after a number of laps. Uh, and uh, basically this is the game. Of course, said like this, it's a pretty silly game. The uh, cool part about this is the eat cards. Uh, you see, it's uh, the 60s, so uh, the technology is what it is. We are talking about uh, heavy metal rockets propelled uh, by explosion, staying staying uh, attached to the land exclusively, exclusively because they have wheels. Uh, and uh, basically, the, mo the, the, the engine overheats, okay? Uh, so whenever you do something risky or you want to do something... Uh, which is not exactly allowed when you want to break a rule you pay one hit 
cards so you shuffle a useless hit card in your hand uh, so if you want to switch to shift gears uh, for two uh, for two gears at one time you have to pay it if you want to uh, take a corner at uh, a speed more than safe you pay it uh, you pay a, an absurd amount of it and you go on paying it and uh, this works because uh, since you get reshuffling your uh, your deck continuously with these cards whenever you are overeating your engine you will end up with an empty end when you possibly need it uh, just uh, just uh, think of being in front of the finish line you are you, you just need that one burst to get uh, and win and you have six hit cards in your end and only one, one speed card uh, to play so basically you 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 just were too greedy in playing uh, before also the hit cards is actually a limited pool because depending on the circuit you are playing on uh, you can have a set amount of hit cards and uh, for instance the, the average number is six so you can uh, uh, crisscross the rules uh, basically just six times uh, in a match like six times all players uh, together or six yeah, times no, per player? A, 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 six times per players and there's actually a way to cool down the engine. Uh, in the base base game you can only cool down the engine if you go at lower uh, gears. So if you go in the first or second gear you can uh, you can cool down your, uh, your engine for three hit cards from your end or one hit card if you are in second gear. So basically, the game is all a matter of uh, managing your end in a way that you are in the right gear at the right moment with the right number of cards. So uh, you have uh, you have a straight line in front of you. You go over it. You do uh, everything you need. Then you uh, basically go immediately to first gear be before a corner so that you get. You can get it slow into the speed limit and you don't get over it and you can cool down the engine and go on uh, back and forth like this uh, this is very strategic and it's uh, uh, a very interesting meta game by itself because uh, uh, you are basically playing uh, both against your opponent and your uh, and your own end but there is another thing which is, uh, <gasps> in my experience, the one thing which actually make you win or lose the the match, which is the, the slipstream effect. Uh, now, uh, these are all concepts that uh, basically a Flamme Rouge player really grasps, because uh, these are all concepts uh, borrowed from that game, although they play differently, but if it's interesting we can talk about that later. Uh, the uh, the cool part is that if you end up adjacent to your opponent directly in front of you, uh, you can use slipstream effect to go at least to uh, two squares ahead of him. So uh, that way you are basically trying to leverage slipstream to end up directly behind your opponent, so or adjacent, so that you can play. Uh, the slipstream which has no effect on overeating and on your top speed uh, in the corners and so on so that's basically a free uh, way to overtake your opponent and uh, since you are playing cards at the same time that's actually trying to guess how your opponent will play that specific turn in the circuit because uh, you want to end up adjacent to them so to get that free boost and that's beautiful <laughs> this is basically all of the core game the uh, game box comes rich with four modules you can add up uh, I will not talk at length about those but basically you can customize and power up your uh, car before uh, taking uh, taking a, a race which like is, in Mario Kart? Yeah, li li no, not exactly. Uh, like oh. the, the, uh, 
actually like the customization at the beginning of Mario Kart. When ah. you take the body, the wheels, the steering, exactly, you can get up to three. You can ah. draft up to three special power cards, which always give you something in exchange of something else, so that you can adapt your uh, play, your play style, both to the to the playstyle of your opponents and to the to the, the actual uh, circuit you are playing on. You have four circuits to choose. For you can play in the USA, France, or Italy, or UK, which were the four the, the, the original four circuits of the of the Formula the, One. Yeah. Does that change some aspect of the game, or is it just um, the race itself? Uh, this is a, an aspect of the game because you have actually four boards. Uh, you you have f- four different circuits with different. Uh, uh, for instance, Italy Italian circuit is uh, basically a continuous corner. You are turning all the time, except two uh, very wide straight lines. So that you have it's basically a tactical game of just being at the right moment with the right cards in your hand. If you go US, it's uh, mostly an average circuit. Like you have a lot of straight lines, then you have a couple of corners, and you have another stri- uh, another straight line again. So uh, it's pretty strategic, and it actually matters how you decide to customize your car depending on that. There's this drafting aspect, which is very cool, and uh, this is the garage module. Then you have weather. Weather applies globally to. Uh, to the to all the board and on specific corners then you have uh, the the with the weather comes the road condition you have actually um, a few um, tokens that you can place in various places on the road which determine uh, how the road answers your uh, response to your car when you cross it for instance uh, it could be a, a, a segment of road where slipstream takes you two squares farther. Uh, there could be a, a segment which in which the corner has a speed limit reduced by one because the the, the terrain is damp. So it's it's actually pretty strategic and that's vari- variance to the to the circuits. Then you have the legends mode, which is beautiful because it's basically a solo mod when uh, uh, this game is one to six players so six cards can race in the base game but the beautiful part of this is that you can actually uh, play two people and four legends or one people and five legends or whatever a player count you want because uh, uh, legends module is a very very simple ai driven way of playing with uh, robotic opponents uh, I had uh, uh, so far I had 11 plays of it two, two of them were with the legends module and I can say that uh, I find uh, probably I, I I appreciate most the the interaction with players because this is a game when where you trash talk a lot <laughs> so uh, it's beautiful to 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 overtake your opponent uh, right before the straight line or uh, see them overeating when you surpass them uh, it's beautiful uh, it's uh, that, that sounds like a great upgrade on uh, on <laughs> yeah exa- uh, uh, actually I, I have to say that flam uh, uh, rouge and this game are basically twins uh, i have consideration of this of mine uh, first uh, these are different games different enough to uh, if you have uh, uh, Flamme Rouge, you could want to play it. And I recommend it. I have Flamme Rouge and I also have it. And I will play both. Probably uh, this year and for a bit more, I will prefer it. But uh, uh, they are different. In Flamme Rouge, the game is managing your end because uh, uh, the fatigue you add, it's actually, uh, you are keeping it forever. And the speed you waste is wasted forever. So it's actually a game of economy of cards. It is a matter of managing your end because your end is get is getting constantly reshuffled, and so you are basically managing the effort across the long run. You have two laps to finish, two, two or three laps to finish race. So it's basically a game of managing uh, 
constantly pulling back to get back the cards so you can spin it later but when you get it is bad so you try to cool down again it's a beautiful strategy game probably a bit more brain burner than uh, than uh, flam rouge but beautiful and immediate all the same but uh, they both they both seem like in their mechanic they try to emulate reality in a quite realistic way uh, Based uh, from what you're saying, I yeah, mean, which... exactly. Uh, what what I think about this game, uh, first, uh, they have a few mechanic which which grasp reality uh, very beautifully, but this is not a simulation. Okay. Uh, yeah. The mechanics are beautiful and thematic, but they are not definitely emulating the reality. They are. Uh, this game is mostly a mix between Flamme Rouge and Formula D, which is the old classic which worked basically kind of like this with gears and she uh, when you try to go on a corner at the right speed you have to be in the right gear otherwise you'll crash uh, uh, you'll crash on the walls but uh, i think that this is a revised version uh, actually more modern and very enjoyable uh, I think that this is basically an iteration on the Flambridge formula to be more similar to formula d if I have to say, uh, I I already put Flame Rouge as my best racing game, or at least the best racing game I have in my collection. But I think that it pedal to the metal is a notch higher, and that's basically it. Of course, uh, I am just eleven games in, so I can change my mind all the time. <laughs> but uh, my impression is that uh, Granny Ruth Peterson tried to uh, do everything that was promised in Flame Rouge War Tour, which we are already waiting, by the way. <coughs> and uh, it's basically a single game. Uh, f uh, everything I said you get in a single box. And this is beautiful because uh, there's an entire game there and four modules. It's like you got the Peloton expansion inside Flame Rouge. Uh, all I can say, I like this game and I highly recommend this. It's beautiful, you can play it with your family. You uh, And uh, the both the kid who plays this game for the first time and uh, the appreciator of Brain Burners will like this game equally because that's to play and that's immediate to get into the game. Yeah, that sounds really enjoyable. Yeah, it is. Also... One thing to be said, uh, one shout out for uh, Days of Wonder. Uh, like I said, I had, uh, like I said in the study catch up, I had a lot of problems with language editions, but really it wouldn't have been a problem if I got the French version for two reasons. First is that there are basically no in game text, there are only 10 event cards which would have been, to, which, which would have needed to be translated if I kept the French version, otherwise the rest is just icons. And uh, the second thing is that uh, Days, uh, Days of Wonder uh, keeps an archive of PDF files on the website page. You can download with the manuals in all language this edition is translated into. So you oh, can, that's cool. Yeah, it's a pretty civilized move. But I appreciate them, so they deserve this shout out. Because, uh, for instance, I, I, I love Rift Force. I got Rift Force Beyond. Out of exasperation, I got the German version. I told myself, okay, the, the cards I have basically no text, so I only need the manuals. And the publisher is not giving away the, ma the, the, the English manuals. So I appreciate this. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. It pedal to the metal. Go buy it and find it in English if you can. <laughs> <laughs> and with that final word, we're out of time for this podcast. Thank you for listening to The Last Standy. You can catch us at uh, www.patreon.com forward slash The Last Standy on YouTube or subscribe on your preferred podcast app. So it's farewell from Alessio. Goodbye. Alexis. From Belgium. Au revoir. And myself. Au revoir. And remember that the second E in Standy is for excessive.